Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Q&A Sunday. I'm Rich Dallas with Berkshire Hathaway, the Dallas Fincham team, and today we're going to tackle three more questions that we get every time that we write an offer. Number one, I submitted an offer. When am I going to hear back from the seller? Number two, the seller countered back. What do I do now? And number three, we have an agreed upon price verbally. Should I celebrate now or when is it the right time to celebrate that it's my house, my offer is accepted? Okay, let's jump right in. Number one, I submitted the offer, when should I hear back from the seller? When we write up an agreement, we give the seller 24 hours to respond to our offer. Some agents will put in 24 or 48 hours, but most people have just the next day. So if we write an offer today, the next day is when we should hear back from the seller. Now, some sellers take their time and it is very stressful when a seller does not get back to you in a timely manner. But that time is of the essence and if the negotiation goes past that time of the essence, then your contract is no longer valid and that time of the essence does need to be updated as you move forward. Now, that time of the essence, you should never leave it blank. If you're an agent and you're watching this, never leave that blank because if a seller decides four weeks from now that they want to sign that offer, it's still a valid offer, which sounds crazy, but it's true. So always put a date in there, agents that are listening and buyers, that date is when we want to hear a response by and then we have the negotiation timeline of when it's going to kick in and what we're going to do next so next question the seller countered back what do we do now there's a couple of options one you can just say no thank you i'm not going to pay that price two you say yes i'm going to pay that price or three we negotiate again and we go for a recounter. So we counter offer their counter offer. So that's what typically happens. Let's just give real world examples. Let's say the house is listed for $650,000 and an offer comes in at 600 and you then counter uh, the buyer or the seller counters back at 640. You come up to 620 and then we go back and forth until everybody's happy. So that's kind of the bounce back and forth. Now, here's question number three, and this is the one that gets a lot of people, and it can be kind of tricky if the seller is not a person of their word. And what happens here is, let's say it's seven o'clock at night, and we have a verbal agreed upon offer, all right, we, we'll use that example of the 650 house. Let's say we all settled on 635 and we have a verbal, you know, we said, yes, let's do this. We send over the paperwork to them at seven o'clock. The buyer has signed the paperwork. The seller has already said, yes, I'm going to sign the paperwork. We have a deal. But the other agent doesn't get that signed by the seller and an offer comes in at let's just say eight o'clock the next morning. Now that agent's job is to present that offer to their client. They have no choice. Now, most sellers, not gonna say all, but most sellers will say, I'm a man of my word. I, you know, I accepted that offer, let's move forward. But if that other offer is say 650 and that's $15,000 more than what they agreed upon last night, and when they, in this example, there's a good chance that you're going to get an email from the other agent or hopefully a phone call and the agent's going to say, mm, I really hate to tell you this, but another offer came in and I had to present it to my sellers. And now, you know, you might be in a multiple offer situation. So when you have a verbal agreement, don't celebrate just quite yet. There is a reason why there's the phrase signed, sealed and delivered. 
That's not just a, you know, fun way to say something that you handed it to somebody. That is a legitimate signed, sealed and delivered offer. That's where in Pennsylvania, that's when it becomes valid. And that's when you can celebrate. That's when you crack open the champagne and you say, that house is mine. I have it wrapped up in my name. Now there's all kinds of other obstacles that you have to get through mortgage, uh, inspections, you know, title, all the other things that go into that. But that is when you can celebrate and say that the house is wrapped up in your name and you are moving forward with that house and nobody else can put an offering on it. So those are three things that come into play during an offer situation that just, we actually just had all this uh, happen this week. So we've had all those questions and we get those questions a lot. So I just wanted everyone to know that when you submit an offer, most sellers are going to react quickly and they're going to want the negotiations to keep going. The counter offer, when they counter offer, you have the ability to walk away, accept or recounter, and then don't celebrate until it's signed, sealed and delivered. And then you can give everybody the thumbs up, post it on Facebook and say, I bought a house. All right. So that is Q and A Sunday for this week. If you have an question that you want to hear on a future episode. I would love to get your comments. Put it in the comments below. Reach out to me. My number is 412-965-6387. Find somebody on the team. Reach out to them. We are all willing to help in any way we can with any buying and selling needs and get you through this uh, market that we're in right now, which is pretty good, very solid. So if you have any questions, reach out to somebody on the team or myself, and we will help you get through it. All right. Have a great day and take care.